Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Digital Charcuterie, where we are crawling along here in a good way, not in a bad way, as we track step by step what's happening in the Marvel United Multiverse campaign. My name is Andrew Fantasia, and if you've been enjoying these videos, and hey, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to drop a thumbs up below. Feel free to give love to the subscribe button, all that great stuff. And if you think I'm all right and tolerable, feel free to check out my novel that I wrote on Amazon. It's available there right now. It's called Side Scroller. It's an adventure comedy that takes place in a world that runs on video game logic. So if that sounds like something that would float either your boat or the boat of anybody you know, you can pick this up on Amazon right now. And yes, there is an ebook if you're into electronic books. We are on the home stretch of this board game campaign right now. And for a home stretch, I you know, it's been a long time since I've followed any of these campaigns, but I am forgetting just how action packed the home stretches are. I was only planning on doing one more of these episodes to cover the last bit of the campaign, and then I realized, oh my god, these last few days of the campaign, so much happens. So I have to squeeze another one in here. Let's talk about all the news we got from Sunday to right now, Tuesday morning. Let's get into it. So on Sunday, Simon started things off by giving us pet companions as a miniature expansion, and I know that this made a bajillion people really excited. You've got these little pets. Uh, it looks like they're going to be a different color too. It looks like they're just going to be like beige or something. And they can be used as a companion to go alongside your heroes. And you get people like Cosmo the Space Dog, Jeffrey the Land Shark, and my personal favorite, Throg, the Frog Thor. They're all there. There's a whole bunch of these guys. I'm going to be honest, this was not something that was part of what I was looking forward to. Um, I just, I think back to another game that Simon made, Arcadia Quest. And that was the first, my first introduction to Simon. And I was digging that and I was getting all this stuff. And by the time Arcadia Quest got to the point where they introduced pets, I felt like I was standing back and I'm like, hmm, that's one bridge too far. That's one addition that I'm not super in love with. I'll probably try them once, but... Yeah, the pet thing, not for me, but I know they're for a lot of people, so I'm really happy that those people got themselves some pets. Now you can finally play as Goose the Cat, so there you go. After the pets, we unlocked another villain that lots of people have been asking for, and you'll notice that's the trend here with these final stretch goals as they start rolling out. And I say final as if I know what the limit is. I have no idea how many more are planned. All of the stretch goals that have been coming out since, like, Sunday night, these are some top-tier characters, okay? We are far away from the cyborg Spider-Man territory of Stretch Goals Yore. Now we're getting into people that so many fans have been asking for, sometimes incessantly and worryingly, but we're getting them. And I know I was in the same boat with my Hobgoblin love, so anybody who was looking forward to Enchantress, guess what? You got yourself an Enchantress. She got unlocked. We talked about her in the last video, so no need to go too far into her, but she's going to enchant people. That's what she does. Great. And after she unlocked, look who came revving into town on his fiery bike. We got Ghost Rider, but not just Ghost Rider. We got the Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider. The Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider on his motorcycle in all his glory. In a game full of beautiful miniatures, this might be the best looking one they've ever made. I don't know. Is that too bold of a statement to make? I'm going to make it anyway. And I put him on my list as a huge long shot because at the beginning of this campaign I didn't think we were going to get so many variations of characters. I don't know what was wrong with me. I just didn't think that was going to be a thing but I put him on the wish list anyway which means I get to check his name off the wish list now. Here we go. We got ourselves a Johnny Blaze. Now when I inevitably invite Nick Cage over to play the game I know exactly who he's going to pick and that leads us right into yesterday afternoon's live stream. The Monday live stream with Helena and Andrea and Tiago, where they unveiled the thing that we've all been waiting for, the final expansion and the all-in bonus. Uh, this is usually the incentive to end all incentive when it comes to these, as far as what I have seen and heard and read. And boy, did it work. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. So the final expansion in this multiverse campaign is, in fact, what I guessed it would be, World War Hulk. But it's not everything I guessed it would be. So World War Hulk, what does it come with? Well, it comes with one thing that I predicted for sure, which is an alternate version of the Hulk that can be both a hero and a villain. So 
you fight the Hulk, makes sense. World War Hulk is all about everybody fighting the Hulk. So yeah, absolutely. Make that a game mode. So he's there. He's Gladiator Hulk, uh, except when he's a uh, villain, he's not called Gladiator Hulk. He's called like World Breaker Hulk or something. And he looks extremely tough, as do all the characters that come with him. There is a hero version of Hercules. Uh, he's not carrying his big rod or whatever it is that Hercules carries around. I can't remember, but it's Hercules. We've got him. He's here. We've got the Iron Man Hulkbuster suit. This is a big one that people really, really wanted. And that's a big, chunky mini. That Hulkbuster looks sweet. And that rounds out the heroes. The rest of the box is anti-heroes. The Hulk is an anti-hero, obviously. So is Ares, the God of War, who I'm going to admit straight up, I didn't even know this was a Marvel character. I know he's a DC character. I know Wonder Woman fights him a bunch. I didn't know he was part of this at all. So there you go. You got Ares. Last but not least, You've got the Sentry, who is a big time villain that I know a lot of people wanted. I think I almost had him on my list. I was like this close, but I didn't know enough about him. Uh, he kind of made the cut of honorable mentions. I wanted to put him in there because I knew he was popular and he's probably going to be in the movies, but there was just more people that I wanted more than him. But I'm really happy to see Sentry is finally among us. So this box impressed me and I liked it. But the most impressive thing to me was that this is a retail box and the Kickstarter exclusive bonus that you get is another hero in the form of Doc Samson, who looks amazing. His cards look perfect. I know this is a weird thing to talk about, but I love how colorful this game is and I love the color of all the heroes cards and his cards coloring is Flawless. It is exactly the color I would have wanted for Doc Samson's cards. And the reason I thought so much about what color Doc Samson's cards would be is because he was on my wish list. He was somebody I wanted to see. So let's tick that off. Beautiful. We got ourselves another great character to add to the roster. I was more happy than for Doc Samson than anything else in this box. That's that's what made me grin. And as the cherry on top of the Sunday, the devs announced that the all-in bonus this time was not going to be some pithy little old man Wolverine. No, they were going all out. They gave us Fin Fang Foom, a ginormous dragon that if it wakes up, it causes a whole heap of trouble. What a great villain to add to this. And apparently he's a villain and he's a challenge mode. You can add him as a challenge to another game if you want. The amount of work that went into this. Can somebody just give everybody an award right now? Just give them all awards, every one of them, right now. Fin Fang Foom is going to be part of the all-in bonus. And something that makes me happy, I didn't know this, is that the all-in bonus does not include the um, aesthetic stuff. It does not include the playmat or the plastic tokens or the cardboard upgrades or anything like that. I was worried that it would. Those are expensive upgrades and I don't necessarily want all of them. Maybe I'm dumb for not knowing this ahead of time, but like I said, I don't really follow these campaigns very often. It was literally just Marvel United X-Men and now this. Oh, and Arcadia Quest, but that was so long ago, I don't even remember. So I was just in the sort of camp where I was worrying like, oh man, that all-in bonus is gonna be a lot of money and it's gonna be a lot of stuff that I don't necessarily want, but no. It's cheaper than I thought it would be. It's all the stuff I do want, none of the stuff I don't want, plus Fin Fang Foom. What more could you ask for? And of course, this got the pledge ball rolling because we started unlocking heavy hitter character after heavy hitter character. And the next one to get unlocked was Gore, the God Butcher himself. So now when Nick Cage is coming over to play, I can also get him to invite Christian Bale and Christian Bale can come and he'll be like, I want to play Gore. And I'll be like, whatever you say, Mr. Bale, please don't hurt me. And then we'll all have a great time because Gore the God Butcher is in the game now. And he looks really hard, just like every other villain they've announced this uh, campaign. He looks like th the difficulty level spiked so much. Anybody who complained that this game was too easy, those people are all going to be quiet for the next like three years. And of course, Gore was on my list as well. So let's go ahead and welcome him with a nice little green check mark. There we go. And another character that shows up on my list, who happens to have been unlocked next. Somebody a lot of people wanted to see, Man-Thing. Man-Thing is now in the game. I thought he was gonna be an anti-hero, but it's okay, we got him as a hero. He's here, he looks perfect, he looks pretty much exactly like how I hoped he would look, and I get to check him off the list. He was one of my top five most anticipated characters, which means we now have four of the five. Will the fifth one be announced? If they do, I'll let you know who it is. But if they don't, I'll say that as a surprise for a future video. Now all we need is a werewolf by night to team him up with. Come on, Siamon, we know he's coming. After him, we got the Dark Avengers team deck. These team decks are sounding really, really fun, and there's so many of them now. But yeah, we got another team deck to add to the list, and that pushed us further down 
the unlocking track to the point where we got Null, the Symbiote King, who's a huge character that I'm not familiar with at all because he's just too new and I haven't touched a Marvel comic since like, I don't know, 2008, so I don't know any of the new stuff, but Null is apparently really popular. He's a big mean symbiote man, and he's another ridiculously hard villain that we just added to the roster. After Null, Simon shocked the hell out of everybody, at least out of me, when they announced Stature as their next stretch goal. And that's not shocking. You know, I think we all expected to see Stature. In fact, I put Stature on my list too. So let's just go ahead and check her off right now while we're here. There we go. Hello, Stature. What shocked me about seeing Stature was that it's another big mini. Like, I know it's an oxymoron, but it's another big mini, like Goliath. Stature is huge. And that got me thinking, is she going to be packaged with the rest of the stretch goals? Because Fing Fang Foom is not. He's, he's a big boy. Uh, they said he's so big that they couldn't put him into that box. He's got to come in his own separate box, uh, which is really reminding me of Arcadia Quest because they had dragons that were the exact same thing. Too big to put, so they had to give their own dragon box kind of thing. This stretch goal box was already looking nice and hefty. I wouldn't be surprised now if it ends up being even bigger than the X-Men one, which makes me really excited. But we got Stature. She's crashing her way out of this cabin. Uh, and now we've got a whole bunch of great uh, ways to reenact the plot of Quantumania, which will be coming out in about a week's time. So that makes me excited, but not as excited as our next character, the White Widow. Now, I put her on my list. I put her as Yelena Belova, and I also had her as just a regular hero, not an anti-hero, but that's fine. We've got her as an anti-hero. There we go. This makes me really happy because now, even if Nick Cage and Christian Bale can't make it, I can invite Florence Pugh to my game, and I know she won't say no, and we'll have a great time. Call me Florence, seriously. But this is awesome. We've got White Widow. Very, very exciting stuff. Uh, and then right after her, hot on the heels of her heels, comes Moonstone, another anti-hero. This is another character that almost made my cut because I wanted to see her show up uh, in a movie. I wanted to see Captain Marvel fight somebody, you know, that was at her level of power. Uh, she didn't make my list, but... I'm really glad she's here. I didn't know she was an anti-hero. That's interesting. I thought she was a straight-up villain. But now we can play as Moonstone or against Moonstone. Uh, and I love how many anti-heroes are getting added to this campaign. I was hoping we would get more than the last campaign gave us. Because the last campaign gave us only like 10, I think. But this one, they're just rolling them out one after the other. There's so many. So I love that. I love seeing more purple. Finally, after Moonstone... We got another team deck this time for the Midnight Suns. Uh, so this was something that a lot of people wanted to see as a box. And obviously we didn't get the box. We just got drip fed Midnight Suns characters. You know, we got Wong. We got Morbius. We got, is Man-Thing part of the Midnight? I don't remember, but we got Man-Thing anyway. So now we've got their deck and it's the next best thing. Now, as it stands, right this moment, we are waiting to unlock another character that was probably the most requested character I saw in the comments this whole campaign. And that's saying something, which is Agent Venom. And Agent Venom is not a character that I know because again, new comics and this guy don't mix. And we were actually really close to unlocking him last time I checked. So you know what? Let me do this live right now. Let me check the feed and see if we unlock... Oh my God, literally, we have just cross the threshold to unlock Agent Venom. This is exciting. This couldn't have been timed more perfectly. So tell you what, I am going to do this right here alongside all of you. Uh, so you get to see my actual reaction here to what the next stretch goal is after Agent Venom. Because we just hit 3,800,000, which is exactly what his uh, threshold was. So all the people who wanted Agent Venom, congrats. You got him, he's coming. Uh, he's got tentacles coming out of his back, and he's Flash Thompson. So Tony Revolori can also come over and play, and he can uh, bring the cast of Willow with him. I am happy to have them all on board. They can all join in the fun. We can have a big Civil War battle. It's going to be great. Okay, I'm refreshing the page. Let's see. We're still at update 90, so they still haven't added the new stretch goal yet, but it's any minute now because we are well over 800k. We are at 3,800,601 and 22 cents. This is always exciting and tedious every time you have to refresh to see what's going to happen because the updates tend to take time and then you're just there, you're waiting, you're waiting for that buffer period. As it stands, see, he's still from bully to agent. We're still there. It's still the top update. So I'm going to try and guess while we wait. Let's see. Let's make a guess. By the time you're watching this, you will know exactly what it is. 
uh, you have the benefit of being from the future. I don't. So let me see. I'm going to guess here that it's going to be another villain. Okay. I'm thinking villains. I think this is totally off the rails. It's just the first name I could think of. Oh, the lizard. The lizard is the second most requested character I've seen after Agent Venom. And he would probably be an anti-hero, I hope. That's how I have him on my list anyway. So I'm going to guess it's the lizard. I'm going to guess that's who's coming up. Let's see. I hope I'm right. Uh, where are we? We're still only at 90. Wow. 90 updates is what I mean by that. We have now crossed into 3,801,000. So he's got to be coming. Here it is. It's here. Lowest of the low. We're digging deep. Mole Man! Oh my god, Mole Man is the next stretch goal, and he's 170k away. Wow. If we reach 3.97, we will unlock for all backers the Kickstarter exclusive Mole Man villain, including his character piece, one villain dashboard, 12 master playing cards, and six threat cards. At least he sounds straightforward. Wow. Mole Man. And he comes with henchmen who, including Giganto, Giganto is one of his hench, oh my god, and Monster Isle. If we reach the amazing $4 million milestone, we will unlock for all backers the Kickstarter exclusive Monster Isle location. Wow, okay. Well, I was, I guess I was right about it being a villain, but wow, Mole Man is great, and he's, uh, he's on my list too. So let's see what happens. Let's see if we can get to Mole Man, guys. We're only 170k away. Let's make it happen. So there you have it, everybody. That's the update for today. Uh, there was one left. I think I got one left in me. I will cover it right up to the end of the campaign. We'll get our final one out there. And after that, you can stick around here because we'll be making more videos about Marvel United even after the campaign ends, including, I think I mentioned this before, I have a video coming up about an alternate storage solution, an unorthodox storage solution. I'm also going to be ranking all the expansions that we're getting in this campaign and ranking all of the characters we are getting in this campaign and maybe a few other surprises as well. So thanks for following along with me, and I will see you all here again for whatever comes next in the Master Plan.